So what is going on guys, welcome back to Gabriel Gaprod and today we are going to see how to create interactive snow with shader graph and visual effect graph a quite useful trick that could be even used with sand or web These videos are possible thanks to my patrons I left a link in the description if you wanna get your hands on this project And with that being said, let's see how we can create some interactive snow and this is composed of four main parts. The first part is a high resolution plane with a lot of triangles, at least it will look smoother. Second, we need a VFX graph to spawn horizontal particles. The third is an orthographic camera to record the particles and output to a render texture. And the last part, we use that render texture inside the interactive snow shader. And I am using Unity 2020.3.10 in the Universal Render Pipeline. And in the package manager, I have also installed shader graph and visual effect graph. Oh, and we have here Thunderlord, character created for my latest visual effect graph course. Which, by the way, we create these four abilities: a projectile hammer, an earth shatter, a hammer punch, and the ultimate ability, which is a thunderstorm. Pretty cool, right? I left the link in the description. In case you're interested, by the way, all of this is done with Unity Visual Effect Graph. So let's get on with this interactive snow, and we are basically going to use this ground and turn it into this. So let's start by creating a blank shader graph with right click in the project. You can rename it and double click to open it up. And the first thing we need to do is in the graph inspector. We need to add an active target, in this case, the universal. First node we need is a very simple one and it's a procedural noise, in this case, a simple noise. This is going to be our snow. We have a scale that we can control with a float already. We can call it snow scale. In my case, I'm going to use a default value of 50. And if you connect this to the base color of the fragment function, and save this shader and then create a material out of the shader we can now drag it to the ground and this is what we got we got that simple noise texture which kind of looks like snow apply it to the ground I'm actually going to increase the snow scale to 80 now what will look cool is if we give some volume to this Instead of being a flat plane, we can use vertex offset for that. So, how do we do it? Well, we start with the position node. If we set the space to object, we will get access to each vertex of the mesh. And if we split this, we get access to RGBA, which is basically X, Y, and Z of each vertex. But we only need to offset this in the Y, in the G value. So, basically, we are going to add something to the G value, to the Y. And then we will combine this vector again, as you can see. So what data are we going to add to the Y value of each vertex of this mesh of the ground? Well, we are going to add this simple noise, basically. It goes from 0 to 1. 0 is black and 1 is white. And the white values will be higher. Basically, if it's black, it will have no volume. And from the combine node, connect these three values only to the position of the vertex. If we save it, we get a crazy amount of volume. Yeah. So we need a way to control the eighth, the amount, and we can do it by multiplying this add with a float that we can call vertex offset or vertex amount. I'm gonna set the default value of 0 0.015. A very small value in my case, because in my case I have made the ground in Blender. And once we connect it like this and save this and save the shader, we will immediately see some changes to our ground. It's not very perceptible, but we got volume. I'm just going to increase the vertex of set in my case to 0 0.05, 0 0.04. As you can see, it looks pretty sweet. In my case, it's smoother because, as we have seen before, I made this ground in Blender with a lot of subdivisions. 
All right, this is all pretty cool, but we need a few more things. We need the camera. Let's create a new camera. I'm going to call it cam underscore render texture. And the sole purpose of this camera is to output to a render texture. So we need to create with right click in our project a render texture. I'm going to call it RT underscore interactive snow. We can also set the size of the render texture to 2048 by 2048. And we can assign this to the output of the camera we just created. On that camera we need to set the projection to orthographic by the way. As you can see we get this square. We need to make sure that the camera is facing the ground. We can rotate it 90 degrees in the X. I'm going to reset the position 0, 0, 0, but I'm going to have set it in the Y like 6. And we need to increase the size in my case. I'm going to set it to 58 because if we go to the top view, you will notice that it pretty much matches the size of my ground. It needs to be as close as possible. <laughs> in my case, I'm going to decrease actually the orthographic size to 56. Well, now we only need something to paint to that render texture. We are going to use a VFX graph. I'm going to call it VFX graph underscore RT painter, which is render texture painter. I'm going to drag it to my scene. Actually, I'm going to parent this to the hips bone of this character and center this with Thunderlord. And this particle system is very simple. I'm going to press the edit button to open VFX graph. And in here, what we need first thing is a rate, a float. I'm going to set it to 5 for now. We need to increase the capacity also. We don't need the set velocity, but we need another float for the lifetime. It's going to be the maximum lifetime, in this case 30 seconds. And then I'm going to multiply this with 0 0.9, so we get a minimum lifetime, just like this. Yeah, you cannot see the particles, but they are there inside Thunderlord, in our case. We'll fix that in a moment. For now, what we need is, is to go down here and remove the set size over life. And also remove the orient block. And then we need to control the size of this particle, so we use a set size, which is going to be random. We can set it in the inspector. And we are going to create a new float for the size. Once again, it's maximum size. In this case, 8 should be enough. I'm going to multiply it with a smaller value, so we get a minimum. 0 0.8, yep. And now we can say a few things. We can say that this is additive. And we want the default particle that comes with Unity, which is super useful. <laughs> and as you may notice, they are vertical. But we need them to be horizontal. It's very simple. If you go up here to initialize particle, we can use a set angle and say we want 90 in the X. Just like this. So this is going to paint to our render texture. But how is this going to paint? But we don't want this to be visible in our game. So how do we do it? Well, we create a new layer. In this case, I created a layer called particles. You can add layer right here. Just name it. And then assign the VFX graph to that layer. And then in our main camera, in the camera you are using to render your game, you are going to go to the calling mask and disable particles. We don't want to render the particles in our main camera. As you can see, it's not being rendered in the game view. But we want them to be rendered in the camera that is outputting to the render texture. In the calling mask, we want to say that this will only render particles layer, just like this. We can also limit the distance that the camera will render. In the clipping planes, we can say the far only 10 is enough, as long as the ground is visible to the camera. And for the background type, we can say it's a solid color, a black color. That's very important. And now if I select the camera, you will notice that we have a point being rendered, which is the particles. If I move the particles around, 
actually they are not leaving particles behind and that's because we need to in the initialize particle click on this local make sure it's world oh yeah now it doesn't leave particles behind because we still need to use a set position and make sure the set position this block is local and now if we move the particles around it leaves a nice trail of particles and if we select the camera we have painted we are basically painting to a render texture make sure the set position is zero zero by the way okay and make sure vfx graph is centered with your character okay but we still need to tell the shader how to use the render texture so if we need a texture then it means we are going to add a texture to the property we can call it render texture and when we sample a texture, usually we use the sample texture 2D, but in this case we want the sample texture 2D LOD because it samples the texture in the vertex shader stage as opposed to the sample texture 2D. And since we want to influence the vertex of our mesh, we need the LOD node. Once we sample this, we need to invert colors. We are painting white, we want to use black because like I said, black doesn't add any volume to the mesh so we use a one minus node that we are going to add to the simple noise and then replace the other connections but for the base color we can actually multiply this with a color we can call it snow color in case you want to change the color of your snow i'm going to choose a white opacity at 100 and hdr mode and connect to the base color. Okay, so that's it. That's all we had to do. Nothing is happening because in our ground mesh, in the material, we need to assign the render texture, RT underscore interactive snow. And here we go. As soon as we do it, we can see the changes. The volume is much bigger because we are adding a lot of white values. But we can see a hole where our particles are. And if we move the particles around, well, as you can see, this is mirrored. It should be the opposite. And that's only happening because we need to rotate the camera in the Y180. At least that fixes it in my case. And now it matches perfectly. Before testing this out, if you want to have a little bit more control over the snow, you can connect the simple noise to a power node and then, and then to a multiply node. The power will kind of dissolve the simple noise and the multiply will control the brightness of the snow, the white values. And we can create two floats. The first float is the snow power. I'm going to push it up here with a default value of 2. And the second float is for the snow brightness, for example. I'm going to push them up here, a default value of 1. And then we can replace the connection to the add. And if we go to the inspector now, for example, we can set the snow power to 3. You have to play with these values and the snow brightness to 2.8, 2.9. Yeah, it kind of gives you a little bit more control over the snow. Anyway, I'm going to test this out. I'm going to press play and as you can see, we have a little problem and it's uh, related to the particles, more specifically to the rate, to the spawning rate. We can increase that. I'm going to set it to 10, maybe 12. And now it's much smoother. But as you may notice, once we get far away from the center of the camera, we can have a tracking problem that's related to the orthographic size of the camera in my case if i start decreasing it as you can see it starts fitting very well by the way the ground and camera they must be centered and have more or less the same size in my case it's 50 and as you can see now it matches perfectly really cool one last thing that i want to show you wait let me just stop this and set the vertex offset of the interactive snow shader to 0 
So it becomes a little bit bigger. Okay, I, I just want to show you that if you see these artifacts, as you can see, when we move around, we have these weird artifacts. For me, the simplest fix was to select the ground and turn off cast shadows. This solution may not apply to you, but at least, at least you know it's related to the shadows, to the way this mesh is triangulated. Anyway, that's it, guys. We have created an interactive snow shader. Pretty cool, this is so awesome, you can do many things with this like sand and even water, play with this in the water and so much more. So I hope you have really enjoyed this tutorial, if you like it, please subscribe, it really means a lot to me. You can find this entire project on my Patreon page, by the way, your support will also mean a lot. I wanna thank every patron, by the way, it really keeps the channel going and a quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are 3 Fix, Elak Frost, Alex Berg Jones, Alexis Liu, Arik of Tikian, Bradford Arendt, David Crew, David Maid Lars, Donald Thompson, Duitran, Gavin Chiam, Goblin Plague, Gunjet, Hostile Mars Game, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Kazulia X, Lianos, Matthias B, Matthew Shader, Mikael Nas, Nat Sims, Nico, Ninja Software, Oitsk, Ricard Cruz, Sverving Tree, Unknown Enigma, and Verisuta. I really appreciate the support, guys. You guys are awesome. Thanks a lot. And thanks everyone for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And I really hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.